You want him to step up? Yeah, one step I bet you want him yeah. to step up. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? I want what you want. Everybody <laughs> yeah. ready? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, okay, so how was boot camp? Boot camp was awesome for me. <laughs> I haven't participated in one of those in a long time, but uh, I think it's a great opportunity for us to kind of set the tone for practice. Uh, we put them in all kinds of different scenarios, all non-basketball specific. Uh, just trying to help them, have them figure it out for each other, with each other. I know you have, uh, every year you come in, you're going to have some new faces. You've got a ton of new faces. That said, as you get started today, are you a little bit farther along than you thought you might be at this point? We are. Um, obviously, it's hard to say than I thought we would be. I did think the trip would give us an opportunity to be further ahead now than we would have been otherwise. Um, but I'm telling you, some guys have made even more strides than I thought they would be able to make You know, at this point. Obviously, most notable would be like Contravious. Um, I knew he would, because of the way we work, and when I recruited him, looked him in his eye and asked him how good he wanted to be and that, what it would take to do that, I knew he would make some progress in that regard. I, I, I'd be lying if I told you I thought he'd be 50 pounds down already. Yeah, the, I think Lindy said he lost a kid. He did, yeah, big kid. Like a first grader, <laughs> second grader. Uh, so the, so the, today you've already kind of set the tone and sent a message to what you want from your team, but, but now you really get to get started today. So what's today all about? Well, today is about taking the steps toward being a champion. Um, it's, it's a baby step, but a first step in, in regards to how do we prepare ourselves to win games? You know, the season, the summer season was about how do, how do we work to make each individual guy better? And with the trip, it was let's get to know each other and play some games so we can have some familiarity with each other, with the system. But now it's about how do we put this team in a position to have as much success on the court as possible? Uh, a lot of drill work, a lot of individual development, but even more so, schematics start to come in play. And, We'll start in a couple of weeks to talk about scouting reports and how important those things are. Chemistry between guys, it's, sometimes it's elusive. I mean, what do you sense team chemistry-wise with this group? I'm always hesitant to try to project too much too early uh, because the truth is you know, nobody's not played a game yet, right? Uh, and, and really we won't find out some of these things until we hit some real adversity in terms of a guy may not have as many shots as he wanted or expected to get or someone back in his hometown telling him that you know, he's better than the guy that's playing more minutes than he is. So you know, some of that's kind of a wait and see, but at this point, the guys all seem to get along. Uh, we put them through some tough things that they've had to help each other through, and they've responded well to this point. But again, you know, the ultimate test will be you know, when it's time to turn the lights on and put people in here, um, who's earned the right to be on the court? And the guys that haven't, how do they respond to that? Do they continue to work to get their opportunity? Do they sulk and pout because they feel like someone's screwing them over? Uh, some of that we'll figure out. Heading into year two now for you here, just what do things feel like for you? Uh, feels great. Um, I'm surprised we're missing the guy who was asking about my sleep all the time. I thought he was so concerned about how well I was sleeping a year ago. <laughs> um, but I feel good. I mean, I felt good coming into last year. Obviously, the newness is gone in a lot of regards, but you know, the job's still the same. Got to get a group of guys to figure out how to play best together against some really good competition. Um, and that task starts today. What's maybe the mantra for the team this season? Uh, we don't necessarily have a mantra. I mean, it's, it's the same. It's what our program is about. And we talk about the core values of our program being respect, appreciation, accountability, and discipline. Uh, those things don't change from year to year. Uh, you have to be something, and, and that, those are the things that represent who we are. Uh, the let's work thing was kind of catchy, but it's also an uh, indication of how we feel like we have to be our best which is just having a, a blue-collar mentality every time we step on the court, um, the way we work in the classroom and the community, all those things going to it. Mike, a couple of us just saw the uh, basketballs with the red blinking lights, the, the shot tracker balls. How, how excited are you for that, and, and what will that do to help your program? Yeah, you know, I think it's most beneficial for the guys. Um, you know, a lot of times you talk pretty generically about how you should work, things you should improve on. Well, now we have a system where we can measure those things for them, uh, and they can – for themselves see, well, I've been struggling in the left corner or I've been really good at the top of the key. Here are some indicators of how I stay away from the, short, the, the corner shots or improve them or how I get more opportunities. And, and that'll go into effect as well as we start to prepare for, for uh, opponents, um, figuring out where guys 
or have the most success. So it gives you a true measuring point, um, if you will, on you know, who's good, where, and then which groups work best together. We'll use it for practice every day, and I'll go back and be able to kind of do a, a analysis on you know what the practice was like based on what the shot charts had, had, tells us. Have you, you used? Said, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, have you used it much already? Or are you going to kind of learn how you're going to use it these next? It's a kind months? of a work in progress. Um, you know, there's not a ton we can do with them in the summer when they're on their own. Um, so now we get our hands on them a little bit more now that practice is officially here. Uh, we used it this summer, but it was just being installed. Uh, so we don't have a whole lot of usage out of it yet, but we'll get we'll get a. In your experience, in your experience, how does year two continuity with a coaching staff? How does that help a team? Yo, this has been the message to um, myself uh, and to the staff. Year two is always more difficult than year one. Uh, in a lot of ways, because the newness is worn off, uh, and you're not just bringing new ideas. You know, you're trying to really take a step forward with. Um, and the challenging part for us is we got so many new guys. Uh, who it is year one for, but for our staff and, and the program under this leadership, um, it'll be a challenge. You know, we expect to have more people in here that expect us to do well, uh, and so that's not pressure. But you know, there's some more things to be accountable for. Uh, we think people are really excited about Oklahoma State basketball again, and that's awesome. Um, but with that comes great responsibility. Uh, when you ask people to spend their money and come watch you, you better be ready to perform. I know you like to use different circumstances for motivation. And you said Contravius looked at you and said he was going to be committed to, to making himself better. But how quickly and how aggressively he went after it, how much of that can you use as a message to everybody else? Look what this guy's doing over here. It's yeah, it's, it's a message uh, to him and the team. Uh, it's also a message to people that aren't quite yet in the program or on how hard we do work and that we will be committed to individual improvement uh, as much as we want team success and, and those banners that we hope to hang up uh, to add to this arena will be representative of team success. Uh, we do very much want our players individually to learn and grow and develop as much as possible. Uh, to, see it, to see a kid come in with those aspirations and to see it manifest itself uh, in a 50 pound lossage and, and truly being able to just play basketball better. And I'm sure he's just feeling better about life in general. Um, it's awesome to see, and it's something that we'll continue to preach and use him as an example of, for sure. Coach, what were your initial thoughts on the whole Michael Weather situation, and when or if do you expect him to be back? Uh, I don't know when or if to expect him back. It's hard to speculate on. Obviously, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I'll just say this, and I'll leave it there. Certainly disappointed in that he would put himself in a position to you know, affect not only his, his own self, uh, but someone else, uh, our team and university. Uh, it's not something that we um, condone. It's something we take very seriously. It's the reason he's not been a part of our team since then. And we'll just kind of wait and see what the process goes until we make any further um, comments or discuss anymore. He was expected to be a pretty key contributor to your team this year. Now that you have to kind of get ready to prepare without him, are there maybe some younger guys you maybe expect to maybe step up into what his role would have been as you start camp now? No, because I honestly couldn't tell you what his role was going to be. Uh, and, and I'll tell you this, I, I'm um, obviously I'm pretty transparent as, mu as most of you know, um, but I don't, I, I'm not worried about him today. I go to practice and whoever's out there is, is who I'm going to coach. Um, and it's nothing against him or anybody else in that situation. You know, we had obviously some ch situations come up last year and we really don't focus on that. Uh, obviously we try to help these kids as much as we can. We bring them in here, we want them to develop and become better people. Uh, but as regards to the team and as we get prepared for the season, we really just focus on the guys that are available uh, and try to do the best with what we have at our disposal. And that'll be no different when we step out here in practice. And until we hear otherwise on him, that's the way we'll approach it. So uh, Isaac getting some shots up in there. How have you seen his jump shot progress since he's been on campus? You know what? Uh, he, he's another example. Obviously, you can't really see his change as well as Contreras, but he's lost about 15 pounds himself. Uh, and and has been, I'll say this without hesitation, he's been the most impressive of our freshmen uh, in terms of making a transition. He's going to be a really, really, really good player. Um, but part of it is, A, he's really competitive. Uh, he was a highly competitive kid in high school. Uh, he wants to win. He's been a state champion before. Uh, but more importantly, he has a tremendous work ethic. I think he has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, but not arrogant about it. Right? He's not disrespectful in that way. But he knows that people have kind of overlooked him for a good part of his life. Uh, now he has an opportunity to show what he really believes he's capable of. 
Um, we do a shooting chart every week, and it's been multiple weeks since June that he's been the leading shot taker um, each week. So uh, I'm not surprised that he's continued to improve just because of the work he's put in. Mike, a year ago at this time, there was an obvious cloud over, over the program and, and uncertainty about what was going to happen. A year later, when you think about your work in recruiting and, and talking with different players and, and everything else, the current guys you have, do you feel like that's been lifted in a way? Um, some, some ways, yeah. Um, it's hard to say for sure. I think we, we stabilized ourselves because we had a good season. And I, and I think I said this. I mean, it's, if we went out and had a bad year last year, that wouldn't have helped. So we tried not to focus on the circumstances. Let's go out and do the best at our jobs every day. And, and last year's team did that and, and gave us a chance to kind of stabilize who we want to be. And now we're trying to take another step forward. Um, without as many questions about things that are outside, we can really try to focus on making these guys better and not, not worry about maybe what's um, going to happen or what could happen. Um, but again, I, I've never really focused on those things anyway. Obviously, I'm, I'm aware, right? I'm, not being naive here, those things weren't comfortable. They weren't fun to go through, uh, but we felt good about what we did uh, and who we were and what we were going to try to be about. And, and now a year later, again, we think there are going to be more people show up here and be more excited about the basketball season started. Um, and we hope that this trend will continue to go for several years to come. Anything specific you're wanting to see out of your team as these practices open up? Uh, they'll see it on my chest uh, when I walk in there. Um, just learning. With, with young guys, that's always the danger is they don't understand the, the, the need for discipline. They've always been more talented and been able to get by on just being better than the opponent. Well, that's not the case. Uh, and there'll be a lot of nights where we won't have the most talented team on the court. doesn't mean we can't have success, but it takes discipline. Uh, it takes a certain uh, amount of uh, accountability and pride to execute and be able to overcome maybe a lack of, of superior talent. So. Um, I want to see our guys continue to communicate with each other and work well, uh, but discipline is a big key for the first couple of weeks. How, how nervous were you the moments before you jumped out of the plane? Wow, I don't know. I, I think, honestly, I mean, I think at some point I just said, you know what, I'm up here. There's no way I'm going to back out, right? That would be the biggest, <laughs> probably cowardly thing I could have ever done is, like, take, take me back down on the plane. Um, and the guy I was jumping with had over 9,000 jumps, all right? So if you're going to do this, I'll call him, you guys should do it Because <laughs> I think that's as comforting as you can get, right? And if it was going to go wrong, then that was just my day to go. <laughs> Lind Lindy said he wants to do it. He, he yeah, he can't do it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thank you.